All right, all right. All right, all right. It is Big Chad's. It's Tuesday. It's the 8th day of February 2022. If you want to go ahead and give me a shout out and just confirm for me you can hear me, I definitely want to say thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, let me know where you're watching from. This is a worldwide thing. And so let me know what you're doing uh, and where you are in the world. We're all doing this together. We're all part part of crypto. So I appreciate that. Sound is good. We hear you, bra. Yes, sir. So folks, like what's up with the dancing sheds? Why do you dance? Um, like, you know, we, we tend to take ourselves too seriously. I know I take myself too seriously. Um, but doing this show, it's fun to dance first. It's fun to set the tone. Learning's hard. I'm going to throw some stuff at you. Some of it's complicated. Some of it's not. I want to kind of get you in that right mode, get you in that right mood. And more than anything, we're just friends. We're all just doing this together. So set the mood right and have some fun. That's why I dance. Um, I'll, I'll keep this brief. It's gonna, not going to be a long update. There are a few things I want to say, but I'm still saving a lot of my thoughts for tomorrow night. Uh, Bitcoin Live. Just as a reminder, let's get this going here. You can find me on Twitter, of course. Big Cheds. Uh, YouTube. So you may have heard of my book, of course, Trading Wisdom. 50 Lessons Every Trader Should Know. I have a new book coming out later this year uh, in draft form. Go to the playlist. Like if you can't afford the book um, or sometimes like even your country, you like even if you want to buy the book, you literally can't buy the book. Uh, go to the playlist. I have 11 of the 50 uh, lessons for free. Eventually the whole book will be up there. I do one every three or four weeks. Check that out. If you're brand new to trading, start with tutorials. You know, it's hard to know what to trust. You can trust this technical analysis based on classical charting, Japanese candlesticks. You do yourself a favor, watch the tutorials. The book, of course, is on uh, Amazon. I have four formats, audiobook, hardcover, paperback, and Kindle. Plus, I mentioned the free version as well on Twitter. Um, and if you're serious about learning, check out Bitcoin Live. I'm a founding analyst. I've been doing two full market updates a week for years, and I haven't missed one. You can count on me. I take it very seriously. And uh, what's nice is um, my, my analysis has held up. It's aged really well. And I wanted to, I'll talk. I have a Litecoin trade I want to go over with you uh, in a minute. But it's fun to go back. It's nice to go back and to know, like, you know, you, you said you said things that made sense and that kind of played out. And that's because they're based on principles that go back 100 years or more. But with Japanese candlesticks, hundreds of years. It's based on the psychology of the market. It's not based on one coin or one project, it's fundamentals, right? And it's trend analysis, it's momentum. So what are we doing here with Bitcoin? And so what, what am I showing you? Uh, let's go, it's a little bit easier. We'll start out with this one's a little bit easier. So what are we looking at? So, you know, you know, I nailed, obviously I nailed the top. If you don't know that, it's on Twitter. I, I forecasted it ahead of time. I told you the day of the top and I had like 30 tweets around that at the time. So I, I nailed the top and it was, it was based on clues that were there. Bottom is, this bottom is a lot more complicated, you know. I don't know if this is the bottom yet, but we do see a sign of trend weakening on the bears part. Like bears have lost a little bit of momentum here, and I'll explain that. Just checking out, shout out to Big Sheds. Uh, Pittsburgh, all right, what's up, Pittsburgh? Uh, play some Bee Gees, paintball for life. I don't have Bee Gees. Watching from Nigeria, that's wonderful. Poland, Indiana, Kuwait. I saw Kuwait in the house. Bangkok, Panama. New York, Ukraine. Listen, folks, we're all we're all basically the same. Everything in society pits us against each other. We're all basically the same with some some variations which make humanity beautiful, but we really have so much in common. Bitcoin, I I saw the top and since then it's in a correction. If we kind of just step back, we kind of set the table. This is a correction in a larger trend. We can switch from daily to weekly, when in doubt, zoom out. We can just see this is a correction in a larger trend. So you have the concept of Dow theory, turn of 20th century, primary, secondary trend. And the question is, when, how long the secondary trend goes, does that become the new primary? And with Bitcoin, the primary trend has always been bullish. It's been bull, right? It's a long-term uh, bull trend. You know, bears have never really gone below, you don't see it on this chart, never really gone below the MA200 and the weekly and never really held it for more than a little while, a couple weeks, a few weeks at most. Um, it's a long-term uptrend. It stayed that way. So that's how you set the table. So when you look at this and you understand, okay, that's Qualcomm. Sorry about that. When you look at this, you understand this is a correction after a massive advance. And the massive advance was 
spectacular. We had signals, we had entries, and we understood that all this price action was in the context of the prior high. I mean, look, I'm not going to go over everything you've seen me have talked about it. All my YouTube videos are there. I don't have to delete them because they age well. So go ahead and check them out. You'll see how we got here. We've been due a relief rally, right? What's a relief rally? Um, even when it's incredibly bullish or even when it's incredibly bearish, let, let's say it's incredibly bullish and we'll take the, the Bitcoin weekly chart, for example. All right. So like a relief rally, let's just see if I can get this going here. A relief rally would be kind of a relief rally for the bears in this case. You get kind of a, a pullback to the EMA eight. It's so bullish. You get the overextension, upper Bollinger back to the EMA eight, overextension back to the EMA eight. So you can have a relief rally. I'll flip it up for you. Now you see what I'm saying, right? Now look at this. The relief rally, relief rally. And then at some point, it stopped. It put in a higher low. It, it had a, a break and it, you know, it kind of did its thing. So relief rally. It's it's um it's a temporary reversion to the mean. It's a temporary movement back to kind of the middle of whatever the trend is. And so let's see, Bitcoin, you know, you you really never almost never stay below the lower Bollinger that long. Even when bears have been in charge and they've been in charge. Bears, you know. Bulls have been tired all the way down. We've talked about that. Um, you know, and you have all that price action here at the MA200. You get the relief rally. You eventually stall at the EMA34. So when you're in this corrective mode, and this is a review of what I talked about. I'm um, just checking in the chat room because I'm getting a little bit uh, on a tangent here. All right. Everything's good. Everything's good. Afghanistan, Scotland, Canada, London, Nicaragua, Indiana. I love you folks. When you're in this mode and you know your relief rally mode, you're kind of thinking, you're just watching where, for, for the watermarks, high watermark EMA 34, high watermark EMA 34. So here you're kind of expecting it to stall here. It didn't. So that's point one, right? Bears are losing some momentum here, right? What are the clues? We now have two closes above the daily MA 50. That's a big clue. Sorry, right here, this orange line, right? We weren't even able to tag it here. We weren't even able to tag it there. Forget about it this time, and then there you go. So after BTC broke 40K, it's panic time. Panic and flush time, because breaking 40K brings kind of this whole channel, the bottom of the channel, you know, the 30 to 33K area, top of the channel, right? Breaking that flush brings this whole zone into play. It's panic. But you still have the price in relation to the, to the Bollinger Band. Thank you, John Bollinger, who's uh, he's still on Twitter. Check him out. You still have the price relation to the Bollinger Band. It's due to mean revert. It's due to, due to kind of bounce back to at least to that middle line, the MA20. So now we're watching MA20. What do we see? The brown line, simple moving average, 20 period, rejected, rejected. Wouldn't even, wasn't able to make it there, rejected, you know, rejected. So you're watching for clues. It's your job as a technician as you're analyzing the trend. You're trying to understand the strength of the trend uh, to see kind of what the trend is doing, all right? And... MA20, we recaptured the MA20. So here we have, okay, that's something right here. Let's clean it up. You have, all right, that's something here. We're kind of recapturing the MA20. But it's probably going to reject here at the yellow line because it rejected here and it rejected here. Well, what happened? You didn't reject. So you're seeing signs of momentum, but it's in the context still of the channels, the horizontal zones, the bottom of support, 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 failed. Double Eve. I did a video on this. The double Eve. There are a lot of fun memes about what I was drawing. It's a double Eve, double rounded bottom. Okay. That's the support. So, what is that going to be? That's resistance, right? High wave spinning top just closed. Second candle above the MA50, but it's, a, it's indecision volatility candle. You kind of expect it to pause here because you've kind of been expecting it to pause here and it didn't. And you expect it to pause here and it didn't. So it's it's gonna slow down because downtrend goes sideways before up, and there are there's always a switching over uh, uh, the 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 momentum. There's a seesaw to it, and it's it's just two steps forward, one step back. Even if we're gonna go to whatever 60k, maybe you're gonna go one step back. You know, at some point, so you're looking for setups, looking for maybe we do a head and shoulders. I've been looking, I've been kind of looking for a bull case here. Um, and I started looking around here. You see my tweet, my Twitter. I put it, my Twitter, put my tweet out where I was kind of looking for a, a head and shoulders inverted here. Um, you know, the neck base initially, I was thinking right around here, but we pushed through that. So 
you know, rule one of technical analysis and, and then uh, is really you want to listen to the price. We can see that's the level to watch, right? Really the underside, 45.5, 46K where it was rejected. Your sole focus right now should be to watch really this level for confirmation that bulls are back. All right. Pay close attention to that level. You know, back here, I'm, I'm not as clear where the support is. Is it EMA 8? Probable. Uh, is it kind of right at this level? What is that? Just at 40K? Also probable. Or is it kind of down here where the, where the bounce initially rejected, right? Also possible. So it's a little bit unclear to me which of these is kind of the key support level. I can tell you what the key resistance level is, right? So you think about with a chart, a chart is a puzzle, and you think about what you can. You fill in a crossword puzzle, right? You fill in what you know you can fill in. In this case, it's the resistance. So we've kind of got that covered. I'll talk about Litecoin. Litecoin's fun. I've been talking about this trade on Bitcoin Live since um, middle of December. And some of my other you know, colleagues were a little bit more bullish than I was. Now it's fine. Um, but in my view, you know, we see where it kind of topped off, um, where it kind of it had the up thrust or the failed bull move and uh, rejected and kind of slow bleed. And kind of in this context where we were back, uh, I think this is when Bitcoin had its, I believe Bitcoin had its failed head and shoulders, uh, inverted shoulders. There it is right here. Yep. And then we broke that. Uh, actually, no, that was up here, actually. So I need to be more precise. That was when we had the failed double bottom. So it's kind of in that context where it seemed like Bitcoin was failing to do that double bottom. And, you know, Litecoin had been bearish. Trends continue. We were below the 200. And, you know, it's almost always bounced off that 100 range, the $100 range, 95 to 105. So I started talking about a trade and I took it. And nobody, you know, you don't want to touch it at that point. And the market's super blood red. Um, but you know, entered it basically at like a 102, ended up just holding on to it because my stop loss was 95. Uh, we didn't quite get there. Kind of hung around. Um, I, I will be honest, I'll be completely honest. And even on my Bitcoin live videos, I said that where it's like, I I don't know, I might have to cut here. It may not, you know, it may not make the target, but it ended up doing it. It was nice. That was up here. I envisioned a drop down to support. Dip below 100, psychological level, scare people and bounce. And where are you bouncing? Right back into the underside. Right? Right back into the underside of support. And that's the same concept here in Bitcoin, where we are potentially going to bounce right back into the underside, right? Um, let's check with the chat room real quick. Hi from Hawaii. Uh, this is a rough call. Hey, but it worked out. It was a rough call, but it worked. And that great. I saw it. It just made sense. Sometimes it makes sense. Uh, greens from Australia. So listen, I want to talk about volume. There's a, there's this, um, there, this meme going around is completely wrong. And that's the thing. So first of all, be really careful about like, oh, you don't know what a pattern is just like Googling it or especially at an image. This is completely wrong. All right. There's several things you need to know, need to know about volume. And I've talked about this. I, I talked about this on my, my latest tutorial. I have a new one coming up. I've talked about it on Twitter many times everything i've ever done anywhere so let's look at uh like for example let's look at this second one um price increases um you know price increases and volume decreases what you need to understand is um every single pattern starts out with high volume and then it will slowly trail off until the pattern completes right every pattern starts out with high volume and it's, it will slowly trail off until the volume completes. So like, for example, price is increasing. Let's say you were doing uh, like a bull flag, but it's not like a down sloping, really a bull rectangle and even a slightly rising one. Price decreasing doesn't matter, right? That would, have, that would be counter trend force, right? Every pattern starts out, you've seen it in every single pattern, an ascending triangle, bull flag. You always start out, with high volume and then the volume will trail off and then and then basically you um you know the pattern will the, the channel will break let's go back to that image uh what are we doing here so the yeah i'm bouncing around here i gotta find it so the point is right there so ev you have you have all this you have when the when the trend is moving in a direction you don't need volume is what you need to understand right when the price is moving uh, in a certain direction, you don't need volume, right? Because there's already an imbalance in the supply and the, in the supply and the demand. You've already got momentum, right? So 
volume will come when the trend is challenged. Volume will come when the trend meets resistance, right? Volume will come when the trend gets to a point where it, it's going to battle. It's kind of battling. So, you know, the context here was, uh, let's go to like the Bitcoin daily chart. We're looking at the Bitcoin daily chart and we're looking at the fact right here where we've got kind of the price rising and we've got kind of, you know, some, some falling volume maybe. You have some falling volume, right? It's already, bulls have already kind of started the relief rally at this point. And we knew... Uh, we knew that a relief rally was afoot, right? We knew that a relief rally was happening, um, you know, at that point because we were below the lower Bollinger Band. We had been overextended and we essentially had the spring. We talked about this. I did this in one of my recent videos where we already had the spring, right? We had the spring at that point. So we were back above that low that was already given some bulls, had some momentum. And then you started to get lower high breaks and you're just trending. You're trending. You don't need volume. And really, when you see the volume declining, you know, what that's going to point you to is when that channel is going to end. That points you to when that consult, when that chapter in the price action is going to end. And you got it here. Excuse me. You got it here. Get the volume here when it broke out. Right. You got the volume there. The channel broke. Boom. Nice volume on the confirmation. So you want to look for volume when a pattern completes, when it breaks out and when it confirms. But when it's in the middle of the channel, it doesn't matter. Like 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 rising price and falling volume. Like it's just not a thing. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't exist. And what you want to focus on is where the volume is. If there's volume on the breakout, that will confirm it. OK. Um, if the price is, and it's what you want to look at is where the volume hits. Let me try to find a good example of this. It's not just volume, but it's volume on which candles and where they appear kind of in the channel. So let me try to find like an example uh, of something that to, to make my point here. Okay. Just a quick random one. I'm going to find something really clean that will make my point. See here, what do we got? Oh, that's ADA, huh? Volume there. Let's see. You're looking for like a really clean breakout, and then you want to see the volume right out right here. All right. So this one, this is what you're looking for, and this is maybe it's a bad example because it didn't work out the way I wanted that you would think initially. But what you look at first is here. You have the volume, right? All this accumulation. And then you look at the red candles. You're starting to look at what's the volume on the red candles. And there was kind of medium and just mild selling off. There wasn't heavy selling off. Now, this chart actually continued down. So it turned out that that wasn't, you know, this wasn't as good information in this case. But it's one of those, all these principles are like 65, 75% of the time they work, right? That or 70% of the time they work. And you're always looking for little clues. And when you have a big move, uh, like here, it worked out better here. And you can kind of see it better here where you have the green volume on the acceleration. And you're looking at these candles, these two red candles. You're looking at, it's called the counter trend volume. You look at these red candles, there's light volume. Sometimes you get a big green up candle with light volume and then heavy candle on, on that like red candle right after it. That's a really bad sign. So it's not it's not just in general, like up, down, up, down. You have to understand that the volume will trend, start out heavy, and then you'll have volume on the break. You're going to understand you have volume at the top and the bottom of the chart. Right. That's that's a pretty common. That's a pretty uh, understood, well understood, understood con, um, concept. And it's you want to look for volume, the counter trend volume. You want to see where you're getting the volume. That's you know, that's why things like the OBV come into play, like the OBV is adding up the buy and the sell volume. And that's how you get a trend. And that's why the OBV, you use something like the OBV to confirm the trend, right? Um, it's funny though, these days, I don't even look at those indicators. All right, what's going on here? I'm gonna say a quick what's up to everybody in the chat room uh, to see how everybody's doing. What do I do besides trading? Well, I'm, I'm writing, I'm working on a book right now. It's called, um, it's, it's, uh, it's called Trading Quotes. And it's essentially the quotes from my book, um, about half of the quotes from the book, the best stuff. And then all a lot, I went through like six years of my stuff on Twitter and found some really good stuff. And then everything since I had published the book, I had a bunch of really good quotes. 
Um, and I put the whole thing together, actually, and it's going to be one a day. It's 365 quotes. So that should come out later this year. I'm working on that. I'm writing. I love to garden, but it's cold right now. Um, I love to play basketball, but it's cold. I love to fish, but it's cold. So I'm playing video games right now, and I'm working on the book, uh, to be quite honest. And I've been working out recently, too. I think that's helping out. Um, and Chad's dances when he's, when he's um, what do you do? Let's see. How do I? How can you start trading as a beginner? Yes. Go to my YouTube. Go to the tutorial playlist and watch these videos. That will teach you how to read a chart. From there, you know, you're going to have to figure out an exchange and go trade at the exchange and, you know, and do whatever you're going to do there. Uh, let's see. A couple more in the chat room. See everybody's doing. Yo, yo from Jordan. What's up, Dean? How's it going? Hey, Chad, I'm a little confused. You can put it. Uh, great explanation. Awesome. You are the man. Thank you. Croatia, what's going on? Um, all right. Cheers from Amsterdam and Netherlands. It's great. I'm really glad you folks came here tonight. I'm just going to remind you, of course, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Big Cheds. I hope you enjoy my feed. I enjoy interacting with you. Uh, you can find me. I am a founding analyst at Bitcoin Live, the best in-class educational platform for crypto. crypto. Twice a week, full market updates uh, from me. I do not miss one. And it's really important to me. And you get access to everybody's content when you sign up. So it's really something that you should do if you're if you're serious. If you really want to learn, and and you know you're sick of of uh, of making mistakes and and having trouble. Uh, the books on Amazon, of course. There are four formats: Kindle, audiobook, um, hardcover, and paperback. I actually have the hardcover here too. Um, but like, if you can't buy the book or you don't want to buy the book, just go look at the free version. It's on my YouTube channel. And by the way, thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe. Um, go to the YouTube channel. Check out the playlist. I have the whole thing for free. I've got a great long form interview series. I, I have four. I have another one coming up this week. I've got some like podcasts and stuff, a lot of stuff coming up. So keep an eye on this, uh, on, this uh, on my page. Quick market updates like this. Check that out. Um, that's it. So like I told you earlier, you know what level to watch. We really want to watch 46. That's the key level, 44, 45, 5, 46. We definitely want to also continue to close above, um, you know, the MA50. I think that's going to be incredibly important as well. All right, folks, Big Ched loves you, all right? Never forget that.